Hey, fellow YouTubers, I'm here at my favorite spot. It's one of these places down the Florida Everglades, one of these conservation areas. It's open for a few more months. The water's going down. I've got my little bitty 15 foot boat, and half the time today I'll probably get out and wade. But there's some bass in these flats, and they're spawning. There's big six and seven pounders. It's pretty shallow water, but there's some big bass. Let's get started. Look at these, look at these, there's, there's a big cleared out spots. Might be a spawn of bed. Might be tilapia beds. I didn't catch them over here. I caught them on the other side. Oh, there's one. Oh, I had, boy, I had a good one to hit. Had a good one to hit. Okay, folks, let's see what happens. Throw it right back in the same spot. Come, come along, come along. Oh, set the hook, set the hook, set the hook. Yes, sir, that's what we're talking about, son. Fish on the flats. Fish on the flats. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Big old nice bass. That's the thing about this, this area. There's some nice fish here. Nice big giant ones. You know, three and four and five and six pounds. Pretty, pretty common fish here. And also, what I'm hoping for is that there is a school of fish here. So I'm going to let it go here. And I saw another swirl. So I'm just going to throw it out to the same spot. And see if I can't get another strike. Okay. Oh. Okay, I'm throwing it out to the same spot and see if I can't get another strike. Throw it right back there and just keep my rod high. I got my rod pretty high. What I'm gonna try doing, I'm in this shallow water right here. The water's just a couple feet deep. Okay, then I'm gonna take a rope and I'm gonna tie it around me and tie the rope right here. Okay, now, now we're talking. This is what I used to do at Santee Cooper years ago when I was a guide. I'd, I'd wade like this and pull the boat. This is the most one because you can be real quiet. You can get into these places and you can just go through here real slow and easy. And you can and I can be real quiet. Just wait along. Water temperature is about 80 degrees. Nice and cool. Now, you know, uh, one thing about, about this boat like this, see, I got everything right here. And if there's an alligator around, I can jump back in the boat. I mean, it's not like a big deal. But believe it or not, in the South Florida area, there's just no, never been any, any kind of problems with alligators. I mean, people think that, they're, that they'll attack you, but if you're out here fishing like I'm fishing, pulling a boat and all, they, they really don't bother you. I've done this for years and years and years at Lake Okeechobee, and they all just mind their own business. I've plenty of alligators, but not, not today. That's not, not a problem. Yeah, the cameraman, now he doesn't like alligators, so he, he stays in the boat. Oh, strike. I got one. I got one. I got one. I got one. Yes, sir. I got one. Yes, sir. Got one on the swim bait. Wading in the, in the swamp. The old swamp wader. I love it. I love it. 
and uh, it's also easier to land the fish when they're up like it you can come right in if they get wrapped up you can come right in and get them <sighs> that's the deal now the secret of a swim bait strike is having a big rod like this i'm gonna let this one go and what i'm doing that's a big old flipping stick kind of rod i got 50 pound braid on here and what i'm going to do is i'm holding it up in the air like like this kind of up now when they hit it i'm going to pretend it's a plastic worm i'm going to drop it back I'm gonna drop it down and pretend it's a worm and just have to, it's actually, if you look at these things, they're just a big fat worm anyhow. <laughs> That's all it is, big giant worm. Okay, let's see if there's another bass out here. There's one, I got one, I got one. Oh, missed them. I missed them, there's a whole school of fish out there, it's on. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this swim bait and I'm gonna put it up for a second. And I'm going to get my buzz bait. I got a buzz bait here. If I can get it right there. And I'm going to take a buzz bait. And he already hit the thing. And I'm going to ease up there. I got a little trailer hook on there. I got it on 20 pound line. Let's, let's ease up here and see what happens. Ooh, there's a fish coming at that thing. There was a fish. Turning a, it might have been a gar. I don't know what it was. I don't know. Let's see if they bite a buzz bait. Oh, I got him. I got him, yes sir. Son, I got to hit the bus bait right off the bat. He just came and hit that thing, just slicker than can be. That's so much fun. I tell you what, down here in South Florida, there's so many good opportunities. Now this isn't a big bass, no, but it's 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 a fun situation. Now this let me tell you about this buzz bait. What I like to do, I like to use a trailer on this thing. And this is the Cavatron series buzz bait. Just a little bitty bass. But it's got a it's a quarter ounce black, and any any color will work as long as it's black. <laughs> it's got a little clacker. See that's got a little clacker deal on it. Okay, let's throw it back out there and see what happens. There's a bunch of fish out here, maybe. He hit that thing. That was cool. Yeah. Now what I'm doing on this buzz bait is that I'm holding the rod way up high. Because the secret of this Cavatron is that it's the slowest moving buzz bait I've ever found. It's got little holes in it and you can and it's kind of flat right here. And it rides, it rides shallow and slow so make a nice long cast with it a nice long rod hold my rod up buzz it along just keep it up high now remember i got a trailer hook on it so i can set the hook as soon as i hit it i don't have to let them take it it's not like the it's not, it's not like the swim bait it's a regular lure Okay, we're fishing a shallow flat. It's it's a spring. The fish are up here, kind of halfway spawning, at least looking around in the shallow water. It's extremely clear, and they're up shallow in just a foot or so of water, so they can see a long ways. So to catch them, you got to make a long cast. You got I'm throwing a hundred feet or so. I'm really making a long cast, and that's where you're going to get the strikes way out there, because because they're not going to anything close. You're going to scare them. Now I'm not running a trolling motor and I'm being real quiet. I'm, I'm, I'm wading along and it's the quietest way to do this, like I'm doing now. 
but still, you got to make a long cast. You know, this buzzbait, I like to fish buzzbaits, but I don't know, they're not really biting it. I've had a couple to follow after it. I got a lot of other choices. Let's talk about some choices. Let's talk about something right now. Let's talk about in that box over there, I see that there's one of my favorite lures. And let's, let's look at it. We, if it gets a little dingy, we can try some, uh, some spinner baits and some rattle traps in some deeper water. But right now, let's just try a, a, uh, a top water. Something that'll walk the dog kind of a deal. Let's just put it on. And I, I tie it on. Basically, I just double the line. I take a double Palomar, and I come through that eye, and uh, make a good, make a big loop because it's a big plug. Let's see, got it right here. This is 20 pound regular mono on one of my favorite. Actually, the rod company is favorite. It's the name of the, the rod company is favorite. It's one of my favorite rods, though. <laughs> okay, come right on down and the loop. Go right through the loop. Let that thing cut the line off. I'm going to be sure to throw the line in the boat. Okay, 20 pound line, nice little top water deal, make a nice long cast, and I'm just going to hold my rod up and just kind of walk it back and forth. It's a little bit slower presentation than that buzz bait. Oh, there's one. Oh, I had him. Dad, gone it first cast. He came up and sucked it in. He came up and sucked it down. Good one too. God darn it, son of a gun. Man, I lost that thing. He sucked it right on down. He sucked it down just like a big fish does sometimes do. Sometimes they don't make a big strike. Sometimes they'll hit these top orders, just, just barely hit them. But that he just came up and sucked on it and took it right on down. Just walk it along. Oh, there's a fish coming. Oh, he's coming this way. I don't know if it's a bass or not. He's right there behind it. I don't know what it is. He's right behind my lure. Might be a go. Oh, you got him. I 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 got him. He just followed it slow and easy. He just followed it slow and easy. Big old nice bass. <laughs> that's something. That's really cool. He just. He just saw, he just barely could see him. And you know, that's the other thing. I'm low to the water and, uh, and I could see the fish moving a little better. Anyway, that's a nice bass. That's a nice bass. Gotta be careful that you don't get hooked. That's the biggest problem with this whole deal. Really be careful. I got pliers and I got things like that. He came behind it and he just followed it. If I hadn't been so aware and watching for a little bitty swirl, he didn't make hardly any swirl. I gotta, I gotta find a pair of pliers though. Okay, I got some pliers right here. That fish, he, he followed it. And I just saw the, the wake. Now, one thing that I used to do when I was at Santee, guiding all the time, being low to the water and waiting like this, you're lower to the water. I'm gonna let this fish go. Nice, nice little fat one. I, I, I could, I could see the, I could see the fish moving better. In other words, when you throw out there in this shallow water, I saw the fish moving just then, just by the plug. Now it didn't see, it wasn't much movement. It was just a little teeny bit of movement. But it, it was enough where I could tell he was there. <laughs> I don't know what this is. I've never seen one of these things before. What's this thing with all this line jumping out like that? I don't know what it is. What is it? I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's what they call a pack lash. Okay, boys. Watch this. <laughs> Throw it out there. Walk it along. No, it's shallow. 
I don't know. Oh, there's one hit it. I got him. I got him, son. I got him. I got him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He hit it way out there on a long cast. Just a long cast out there. Look how far out he is. He's way out there. Yes, sir. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I tell you what, wading in, in these bass areas, that's just a lot of fun. Now, he, he hit that thing. That hit the water. And he came and hit that thing right away. I'm going to try to be careful. This guy. Well, you really got to be careful with these ho treble hooks. They're sharp, 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 sharp. These are, these are, uh, actually, I changed the hooks on these and put these, these are super sharp gamagatsus that I've, kind of rigged this thing up with and uh he just i think it hit the water i mean i didn't even move it a foot and he came and got it so they're hitting this thing but they want it slow see that was the problem with the buzz bait the buzz bait is a good bait but it was running too fast I got one. I got one. Yes, sir. He came and sucked it, sucked it up. Well, you know, they ask me all the time why I'm waiting. Look at this big one. Ooh, son. I didn't even see him bite it. He just came up out of nowhere to cut the thing. It was really a good one. Really a big one. I wait because of the quietness. You can be so quiet waiting along here like this. Look at this big guy. Now we're talking. We're talking about a big fish now, son. We're talking about a big old bass. Huh? We're talking about a big old bass. Now we're talking. So if you want to catch bass like this, you got to try some wading. Son, that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about, folks. Big old four or five pounds bass on these shallow flats. Wading around, being quiet, hitting it, they're hitting it just out of, they're hitting it so easy. It's just incredible. Hey, so folks, I hope you got a few tips on fishing these shallow flats because, hey, that's the whole thing, YouTubers. There's plenty of fish out in the shallow water. It's just hard to get to them sometimes. You need little boats, you need to wade. You need to be a little bit more creative. You just can't get a big bass boat out to some of these places. But it's sure a lot of fun. And come on down to South Florida. We'll see you again soon.